I couldn't keep someone out of this house any more than those girls inside. Oh, for fuck's sake. A bunch of gobbledygook, mumbo-jumbo, meaningless talk. Well, it seems like a pretty shitty game. Yeah, and movie. It is, kiddo. Well, this ain't good. I think we got another House of the Witch on our hands. Who you got now? Who you got now? Who you got now? Who you got now? Got now? Girl on the Third Floor is another movie joining my long list of films where the trailer is by far more entertaining than the film itself. <laughs> I can't help but wonder if it's because almost all the best shots of the film were kind of wasted in its overzealous, ambitious approach. So much in-your-face shit flies at you in this trailer that when you turn the actual movie on, you might find yourself yawning by the half-hour mark. You want my advice? It's already the kind of movie you can get up and take a piss during and not worry about pausing it because you ain't missing shit. We open on Don, who I kept thinking of as Nathan, because he really closely resembles that dude from Heroes. Do you have any idea who I am? And the first line he delivers after the quite awesome establishing shots, might I say, is I guess supposed to break what little tension we have about this tough guy. <sighs> who paints a room pink? I otherwise can't find any reason for its existence. Let's not nitpick. Too much. A long story short, Don has purchased this cesspool of a house and is repairing it in preparation for his wife and soon-to-be-born baby to join him far away from the city life they're used to and some other parts of Don's life which they don't really explain right now and come time when they do, I really didn't give a shit. You'll start to think it's taken like a weaker form of King's The Shining approach where a man descends into madness being that he spends so much time in isolation in this creepy old house, growing ever more frustrated by the ever mounting repairs. But you'll quickly start to see it for what it really is. A visually interesting haunted house story at times, but story-wise, by its end, it's a fucking jumbled mess. Now back to the story though. Some suit drops by the next morning giving Don a bunch of guff and really just so they can have a conversation giving us more details on how he's affording this place. Good old Liz. Yeah, his wife. Smart woman. And that apparently he got into some kind of trouble with the law. Feds cut you one hell of a sweetheart deal, all things considered. It has something to do with strip joints, but who cares? How he afforded the place, what his job is or was, none of that matters in a haunted house story to me. For any character. Just tell me about the haunted house. No, show me things about the haunted house. Don't tell me. But we can't do that yet, can we? No. We gotta have Don go to a nearby bar slash bowling alley to get some grub and also get hit on and at the same time form a friendship with its owner. You queer? Are you gay? Excuse me? What? No. I sell propane. It just came so abruptly into the conversation and it had me rolling. I'm happily married. You get a real fucked up way of welcoming people to the neighborhood, Gary. Yeah, I'll say. Now once we're back inside the house, the visuals do their job carrying the film and evoking a sinister mood again as we're left wondering what might happen since Cooper isn't responding. Cooper? <laughs> Shit! Really? A jump scare involving the dog? You really suck, you know that? Have a creepy door open in the dark cliché. Have a fucking child's laughter. Anything would have been scarier than a shitty jump scare. The more time is wasted with dude wanting to rub one out, but the dog won't give him any privacy, so he changes rooms. Ow. See, what the hell? I'm not grossed out by this scene or anything. If you can, for some reason or another in your story, show me that this dude is under some tension and he needs to whack off or whatever. If you can make that matter to your story, then by all means do it. But it didn't fucking matter in this movie. If anything, it only sets up his need to justify the next scene when some random chick shows up at his door hitting on him, leading to an inevitable affair. What? All while continuing to repair the house, it pisses on him, it shits on him, he sometimes jogs and listens to music that I bet Beavis and Butthead would have a field day over. Bow to me, please, please. He also keeps finding marbles. Yeah, that's the movie's unique little thing, but honestly, all I could think about was Lost, lost, lost. Lost what? I've lost my marbles. Well, let's waste more time. Why would you just hop under there? Knowing everything you know about this house, all the weird, goopy shit that has came out of every electrical outlet, random holes in the wall, the kitchen sink, 
You're just gonna stick your fucking face up under there and like one eye it? You see why it's easy to lose interest? Disgusting! And of course, awesome. the new Uzinator Blaster from Super Soaker. Now we dick around for a while with the blonde chick who has shown up again and is getting a tour of the house and for one, it's not hard at all to guess that she's probably a ghost and we know she's gonna get it on with him so just fucking move on with it. More screen time wasted. <laughs> Yes, the dog has picked up on her. So did we. And look, they even put some of that goofy laughter in there like I was talking about. <laughs> Whether that's of a child or not is questionable. Don't look at me like that. I earned that. He earned that. See, now I might could have chalked up his infidelity to his loneliness and his isolation, which it's not forgivable, slightly understandable. But no, he earned it. This son of a bitch thinks he earned this cheating on his wife. Instantly unlikable. Not that I liked him that much to begin with. Now, sometime later, the hoe from the third flow stops by and seduces him. It starts taking the vanilla sky approach too and he can't really seem to tell who's on top of him. A marble. Only one thing could explain this. Now, seeking to spice up the monotony and add some bodies to the eventual death count, I imagine, his buddy drops by to assist him in repairs, and what I thought was the funniest line in the movie comes when they go to that same bar for some drinks. That the wife? Now, more backstory about Don is given, and I just don't care. You traded a penthouse. Horror house? We ain't in the house, spooky shit ain't happening, and I'm bored. This is an example of the kind of movie that doesn't need all that backstory. You could have just threw me into the action with this character and not explained shit about him. It would have been fine. My head's killing me. I need coffee. You want some? Your assistant already brewed a pot. How could you possibly root for Don? I'm not fucking around right now. It was a fun night. Don't get me wrong. Just eat another marble. Eat several. It's not supposed to be funny, but it is. Now dig this. After Sarah pops up and attacks him, which we knew was gonna happen, he finds this waiting at the top of the stairs for him. You wanna help me? Hit and miss. It looks cool. I don't hate it. There's just so little substance to it. We spent so long on Sarah at this point as like the bad guy that when this thing pops up, you're just, you just have a hundred questions in your head and no fucking answers. Now the next morning, the pastor from across the street stops by. This is actually the second time that she stopped by. And she just does that old shtick where she clearly knows something about the house and is only there to keep a watchful eye on things in case they get real bad. And then, and only then, will she reveal the pivotal information about it that she knows. What's that mean? Just that... Certain places have personalities, and sometimes they're rotten. I hate the next scene. There's no sugarcoating it. Hiya, handsome. Bitch kills the dog, throws him in the dryer, and Don discovers it. Well, that's instantly a few points off. Fictional or not, mm -mm. <laughs> Negative enjoyment, bad plot device. I don't find myself hating her anymore for that act because I know she's a fucking ghost and it's like, you can't like get revenge on her really. Martin. <laughs> but eh. Now he contacts the police and the officer who responds doesn't take his claim that seriously, seemingly recognizing him. Please, let us know if anything else comes up. King Don. Ooh, the pastor knows something but isn't telling us. Marbles. I hate what you've done with the place. Just get on with it. I don't want things to get any uglier. Well, she's a ghost, right? So it's probably just pretending. Man, Lou and all is gonna fuck his world up. I've watched a lot of forensic files. Really? You're just gonna
a sealer up inside of the wall? That little ass can of lie. You didn't even put it on the body itself. You're supposed to technically mix it with... Adon's asshole flag flies loud and proud too when Liz calls in the middle of his half-ass burial, claiming Milo texted her saying they need to talk. He just blows his top at her like the gigantic asshole that he is. I have no idea why Milo called you, but please, by all means, call him. Find out. And while this is going on, Squeaky Mouse laughing girl is chirping all through the walls, and Don meanders up to the attic, where he discovers a sealed portion of wall, and when he breaks through it, discovers this little tiny bedroom, and all the walls are coated with these cryptic-ass drawings. <laughs> Gotta have some marbles. And a creepy-ass baby doll. I mean, how else would we know it's a little girl's room? The damn cat. <laughs> and for whatever reason, Don drills a hole into the wall and feeds a little camera down through it, which only pisses me off because it's so obvious that the angles shown from the camera itself, they would not match the erratic movement of this fucking thing dangling by a wire, falling down between some drywall and hitting newspaper along the way. It's all cinematic and shit, and it just irritates me. Points, though, on the next bit where in his anger he starts bashing the walls. As if greatly injured, different parts of the house erupt in pain. And this is all the cool shit they ruined for you in the trailer, obviously. Hey, alright, we even got in the creepy moving doors. I fucking knew it. Okay, and Mouse Girl coming out of a dresser. Not that original, but... It's all right. Oh, and marbles. Uh. Um. What the fuck, movie? This isn't a Tales from the Crypt episode. I was sold on you being like a serious haunted house film. The trailer made me think one thing, and now I feel like I'm having to solve a mystery that I have no interest in solving. Liz finally arrives at the house for real, cleaning up after Don as usual, I'm sure, and marvels. <sighs> now checking out his handiwork, she pulls one of the newspapers out of the wall and it oh so conveniently just so happens to have a pivotal piece of information to the plot right there prominently centered on the front page. Now, since people in this movie just can't seem to resist the appeal of a rolling marble, Liz follows one this time to the basement, and on her way back up, she gets startled by the hoe. I'm so, so sorry. Now, this interaction barely lasts a moment before the doorbell rings and the pastor stops by and hoe disappears. Mrs. Koch. The pastor's there, of course, to be all cryptic with Liz now, and she won't step foot inside the house either. Why don't we chat outside instead? Ooh, because she knows things. And isn't fucking telling us. This house has a history of bringing out the worst in people. I just wanted to make sure you two are prepared for that. God, just spill the secrets already. Well, thank you for your concern, really. Uh, but Don and I have been through much worse, so. Nah, let's just watch Liz go to the bathroom and talk to herself. With one of the worst lines I've ever heard. I am in complete control of my emotions. Just like Beyonce. God, why does everyone want to put their hands into every gross outlet, hole in the wall, and drain pouring a bunch of shit out of it? Now, after Don hasn't shown up and she finds his cell phone in the house, she heads to the pastor's house where she reads off a laundry list of his offenses. He, um... I just don't care. I have no reason at all to be invested in either the success or the failure of this relationship. Any attempt to tie this into the plot was a waste. Haunted house or bust. This house has a habit of testing men. But just fucking tell us why, oh my god. Now returning home, we get an answer finally in that typical haunted house confusing ass timeline style. Filled with numerous guests, the show is well underway, which Liz catches from the rafters. Don! The music is pretty badass here and totally evokes a Decemberist's feel. We are two mariners, a ship's sole survivors. God, I love the Decemberists. Saw them live twice. It's fucking awesome. So based on what we read on that newspaper page earlier, it looks like this house used to be a brothel and something terrible happened to one of the sex workers. 
And something terrible also must have happened to the little girl, whoever she was. Why it involves a dude in a beak doctor mask, I'll never know, but they always look cool. Except maybe when they're cracking a riding crop every few seconds like a goofy son of a bitch. Now Liz also discovers that Beak Doctor Dude is apparently the father of Mouse Girl. Hands her a bag of marbles. That's my girl. All of that just felt so overdone and it made no sense to me. The male performers wore costumes because the owner felt the mix of erotic and grotesque heightened the experience. I guess that's why Sarah has to come upstairs in the next scene machine gunning out exposition and context to what we just saw. We were popular and the money flowed in. He played with her for months and then killed her, dumping her body at the train. He killed me, my body never left the house. Loved by the men who came through our doors. Would have loved to have seen some of that instead of pussy metal boy whacking off, but you know, they didn't ask me for my input before the script was approved. He was right. And fucking marbles! <laughs> and Don coming out of the closet looking like Pinhead and the Cenobites got a hold of him. I couldn't get them all. Yeah, this might be a good time to come clean. Bunny, I fucked up with that. <sighs> what does that mean? Thank God, there's some man left inside of him. I promise I can change. I promise it'll be different. Oh, don't beg, you loser. I can change, Liz! Oh no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> they fucking did it. They really did that. Liz! This part's fucking cool, though. <laughs> oh, just stop it. You ain't no Evil Dead too. say this is cool, but nope. So where are we going with this? Uh. Oh my god, is that teeth in her head? Well, that sure was an easy escape, huh? You did good. God. You knew. Knew what? Why the fuck didn't you warn us? That is exactly what I said. Life is a series of choices, Liz. You can't talk someone into doing the right thing or the wrong thing. I couldn't keep someone out of this house. Oh, for fuck's sake. A bunch of gobbledygook, mumbo-jumbo, meaningless talk. Well, it seems like a pretty shitty game. Yeah, and movie. It is, kiddo. Somehow knowing exactly where the body in the wall is, Liz busts it out, and she and the pastor bury it, hoping things will return to normal. I guess fuck filing a police report for Don, because hell, the police are probably happy to be rid of his ass, right? How can we really cornball up this ending? I got it. It's months later, Mom has had the baby, and she heads in to check on it one morning. I love you so much. Oh, and fucking marbles. That shit really pissed me off because all I was worried about was that baby choking on a marble. And that pissed me off because I thought I might choke. This movie was just fucking bad. This was not a good movie. Can things get any shittier? That's my girl. It started with a shitty line and it ended with a shitty line. It, it's perfect. Not the movie, but... <laughs> oh...